Uh, so in the blue, what has Asher done correctly? Alex? He dropped the 12 down, 12x. Okay, that was correct, dropping the 12x down. Johnny? He was considered to leave the number that he was driven by, so he put a 1 and then he just took the parentheses off. She put a 1 and took the parentheses off? Well, distributed oh. by Distributed, Mark, then yeah. negative 1. So negative 1 times 8 is negative 8. Negative 1 times 3x is negative 3x. A lot of times we have a negative number out there of seeing that you're doing it correctly, but when there's just a negative in front, sometimes you forget that means there's a negative 1 to distribute. Okay, so remember that. But uh, Asher's done it correctly. Now I want you to take a look at uh, the red step. We've talked about it before, but I'm still seeing it. Still seeing this, so take note. Think real hard. If you're getting these kinds of questions, Marked off. Pause. Slow down. Okay. Josie? Um, th negative 3x plus 12x is not 15x. It's actually 9x. So you're 9x. Positive. Yeah. Positive uh, 9x. It is positive 9x. Now, how has Asher, like, what's his reasoning? That he's got negative 15x. Okay. Um, So what Asher has, has done is, uh, I guess the only way to get what Asher has is to put parentheses around there to say add the two and make it negative, right? He's just added the two numbers together, the two terms together, and then kept the negative that was on the 3x, and, and that's where he's got the negative 15x. Of course, that's not correct. We're not going to add these together. That would be uh, not the order of operations, right? The order of operations says, Right, we could forget about all this and we could say the order of operations says subtract 3x, okay? Even if we started from nowhere, we started at zero, then subtract 3x and we move to the left, 3x's, so we can imagine that looks kind of like this, negative 3x, right? That's the first thing, okay? And then add 12x, I won't put all the little bumpies there, but if I add 12x, that's gonna get me to 9x as Jesse already stated. Rather than saying this is the term, 15x, and it's going to be a negative. For that to work, for this to actually be true, this would have to be there. The parentheses would have to be there. Okay, which they're not. So be careful about that. I see this not a lot, but too much. Too much. If we're making mistakes like that as we move on and we're solving harder equations and we're graphing or doing all these kinds of stuff, it's just going to make it that much more difficult, okay? All right, um, that's it for that one. Let's go on to another. Another one I'm just seeing too much of. Take a look. Red step here. What has Peya done correctly? Like for the 13 text. Um, X, what was it called? Um, to the power of two. Thirteen x to the power of two. Thirteen times x to the power of two. Thirteen um, x squared. She then thirteen times thirteen is mm -hmm. the combining thirteen x squared and five x squared. Okay, so thirteen x squared. Well, square certainly does mean multiply a number by itself, right? And so she has taken thirteen times thirteen. That's one sixty nine. She's taking five times five is twenty five. And then we just made it an x. Okay, that's what she did. And it is incorrect. Can someone explain to us why it's incorrect, Grady? It's basically saying x times x, not 13 times 13. Okay, what is this? Let, let's say this uh, expression, right? It's not quite a sentence. A sentence would mean like an equals uh, an equation. Uh, but this expression is just saying take the number x, multiply it by itself. That's the number you're going to multiply by itself, just that one, only x. If you're done with that, then multiply by 13. Right? 13 doesn't have anything to do with the multiplying a number by itself. Only x is that. Johnny? She also uh, subtracted the 10x from the 
oh, well, yeah, this would need to be an x, right? That's, I mean, all of our problems here have been caused by this problem there. Well, she should combine these together and get 17 minus 10x. And then she, these should still be x squared, so they should be 13x squared, which is 5x squared, and she should get 18x uh, squared. And then she should be done. But this happens a lot, I and mean, it's not a bad thing. It's just it's a mistake, and I want to help you clear it up. This is saying to square the x. It's not saying to square the 13. Okay? And it just comes down to order of operations. Let's just isolate this 5x. Order of operations, here we have a number x. Order of operations helps us decide to do what to do first when it comes to a single number. That's really what it comes down to. Here's a number that's involved in uh, more than one operation. Which operation do I do first? That's what the order of operations is about. Okay. We have an order of operations to keep us from uh, having to use all sorts of parentheses. Okay. If I wanted to not have an order of operations, I would need to make sure to put Parentheses around there first, and parentheses around this, and then you wouldn't make any mistakes because the parentheses tell you what to do first. But the order also tells us what to do first as long as we agree to the same order. What should I do with that x? Should I raise it to the second power or should I multiply it by 5? Raise the x to the second power. That doesn't mean that 5 has anything to do with raising to the second power. It does not have anything to do with raising to the second power. So it just comes out there, waits for x to get multiplied by itself. Okay. Once you know what x is, whether x turns out to be 2 or 5 or 7 or whatever it is, you multiply that number by itself, then you take that answer, multiply it by 5, and that's what that, is, that, that's what that term is worth. Okay. So 5x squared is 5x squared. It's just an x squared term. We can put these together, like we said, we get 18x squared. And if we did that, then, uh, well, I guess we should have scribbled these out. Correct answer would be 17 minus 10x plus 18x squared. Okay. So, we're going to be graphing some graphs. Right. It's the first kind of graph we're really going to get into. We just kind of generally talked about graphs. I tried to impart on you what a graph is so that later you don't get confused. Okay. But I want you to view all of Graphdom, all of the graphs that will ever exist, all of them are all the same thing. Okay? Now they look different, they have different shapes, they act differently, okay? but they're all the same kind of thing. Right? Do you remember what a graph is made of? Like if I have this graph and it looks like this, do you remember what that graph is made of, Johnny? Points. Points. How many points? Infinite, infinite number of points. Okay, where do those points come from? Nobody knows. Nobody knows. I don't know where those points came from. I just made them up. Okay, they just, I guess, came from my brain. All right. Now, a lot of times, most times, uh, especially in an algebra class, okay, those points come from an equation. So there's an equation that tells us where to put points. Okay. Uh, I'm going to want each of you to take this equation, real simple equation, um, start off a little slow here, find me, each of you, find two points that are on the graph of that equation. This equation has a graph, it's made of a bunch of points, the equation tells you where the points should be, so you find two of them, two of those points. Right. See, we're not all completely fluent with this idea, that's fine. Let me do it this way, let me put it this way. Um, I want you to test the point. I want, to, I want you to tell me if this point is on the graph of this equation. The point that I'm suggesting that you're gonna test and decide about is uh, five comma 15. Okay, that's where the point is. If you tell me if, first of all, are there any questions about any questions about 5 comma 15, what that means exactly? Can you tell me, can somebody tell me what this 5 comma 15 means? 5 is x and 15 is y. Okay, so we have these ordered pairs. They come in pairs of x comma y typically. Okay, so this is x, this is y. So who's got a conclusion? Does this point belong on the graph of this function, yes or no, and why? I can just 
side of that, Sean? Uh, yes, it does belong. Why? Because three, if you replace x for five, three mm -hmm. times five, then it equals 15, which is y. Which is y. Okay. Uh, does this point belong? doesn't belong on the graph. Great. It's not true. It's not true. This equation is not true. When the equation is true, you know that the point belongs on the graph of that equation. Okay? Kind of dry stuff, but it's really important. And later on, it's going to be, I, I can't tell you how many times someone's understanding of this concept would have helped them immensely, even in mathematics like calculus and calculus, like they do not understand this, okay? So you might be sitting there being like, yeah, I understand, but do you really? Have you really taken the time to sit there, process it, think about if the equation is true, true equation, then the point is on the graph. Okay. All right, so, Besides this point and besides this point, I want you to each find two points that belong to the graph of this equation. Okay. So funny that you didn't have any. Should uh, keep in mind, I have not told you how to find points, but I have given you the tools to figure it out. You know when a point belongs to the graph? Okay, you know how to take a point and see if it belongs to the graph? You should be able to go the other way, figure out what points do belong on the graph. Just and there, you're all going to get different points, probably. Some of you may choose to find the same points. <coughs> all right, what I want to do is find as many different points as I can and put them up here, points that you found. We'll all uh, verify or we'll uh, refute your points' validity. Okay, let's go around. Start with Grady. Um. <coughs> So a handy way, if we're gonna have, we're gonna list a bunch of points, it's a handy way to list them with a table. And you said your point was again? Uh, 312. 312, does this point belong in the graph? Mm, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. No. First yeah, then no. Alex? No, because if x is three, then three times three equals nine. Okay, so what point oh, would belong? I mean 412. Oh, 412. Not 312, but 412. Okay. Do you see the difference between what Alex said and what Grady's correction was? Can somebody point out the difference? John? Um, from 3 times 3 equals 9, and 3 so equals 12, 4 times 3 equals 12. So Alex said, well, the x he used was 3. If the x uses 3, then the y we should get is 9. But did Grady say, like, oh, yeah, that's what I meant? No, he said. No, I meant x is 4, right? So you can change either one as long as the equation is true. So 4, 12, and 3, 9, I think you could put 4, 12 on there. There's 4, 11, 12. 3, 9. Okay, another point different for those, Sean? Uh, 2, 6. 2, 6. Does this point belong on the graph of this yes. equation? It does. Okay, 2, 6. Cadence? Negative 2, negative 6. 
know when people venture into the negatives. Show the gray part. Negative two, negative six. Blake? For one, three. One, three, do we agree with one, three? Yeah. One for x, three, y, that's a true equation. One, three, okay. Uh, Johnny? Negative four, negative 12. Negative four, you said? Yeah. Negative four, negative 12. What do you think about that, everybody? Yeah. yeah, three times negative four, negative 12. Negative four, negative 12. Well, okay. More and more, Sean? Negative three, negative nine. Negative three, negative nine. What do you think about that? Does that check? Negative three for x. Three times negative three. If a negative nine is there for y, then it's true. Okay, negative three, negative nine. Cadence? Zero. Zero. Zero, zero. What do you think about that one? Mm -hmm. Good. Zero times three is zero, and y is zero. We have a true equation. Okay. Running short, but we could fit at least one more, Sean. Negative one, negative three. Negative one, negative three. We got negative two, negative six. All right, that pretty much does it for all the ones that I can fit, or does it? No. Where? Between 1.5. Let's get on it. 1.5. That's quite right. 4. 4.5. 4.5. 1.5, 4.5. Okay, 1.5, 4.5. Are you surprised that point landed where it did? No. Why not? If you draw a line through all the points that you have, it curves through your line upwards. So before I put that point there, you probably started to see this before, I plotted so many points yeah. that all of the points seem to fall in what kind of a pattern? Diagonal line, right? Straight line. Okay. What kind of shapes are not straight lines? Circles. Circles. Ellipses. Curves. Right. The thing that I drew when I was just talking about graphs in general, right? This curvy thing like that. That's just that's a curve. Okay. So it sure seems like a line could go through. Well, certainly a line could go through all of these, right? Or could, could a line go through them per, like a perfectly straight line? Yeah. Can you be so sure that a perfect like it's not at all like bent? It's perfectly straight. How can you be so sure that it's perfectly straight? When it goes through the origin of the graph, like zero zero. Well, I can tell you, not all graphs that go through the origin just because they go through the origin oh. doesn't mean they're straight Ooh. lines. Ready? So the graph is true. Well, the points are all true. We all verified that they were they made the equation true and therefore they are points that are part of the line. But what about looking at where these points are, maybe the pattern of these points makes you, oh. you so certain that if you were to connect these points, like the connection between these and these and these and these and these, that the whole thing would make a straight line, perfectly straight line. We could plot a bunch more points. What about where those points lie would tell me that this makes a perfectly straight line? Yeah. That's more points. We have a lot of points, though. I mean, that's a lot of points. If in between we did not get a point in between, like right there, it would be pretty surprising. It would be kind of shocked. Right? It certainly seems like all the points that we ever find should be straight lines. And how it would like. I don't know if I'm ever getting this answer, but what, what do you think? How can you convince me that if I were to well, put or to just connect these and these and these two and these two and these two and these two. And these two. That, that big long shape would be a perfectly straight line and not at all bent in any little way. Because if you like, put a mirror uh, right in between, like slanted, like a straight mirror right on the origin. Put a mirror here. Like diagonally through it. Like then, this? Then it will be all just the same points, just with a negative. Would I put the mirror like this? No. Oh, like.
like this. Okay. That's more of an argument for it's got some kind of a symmetry, but it doesn't have to be a straight line. It has symmetry. But, like, the, the, the points are exactly the same on each side, mm -hmm. other than they have a name. Right, that's symmetry, though. That's not straightness. What is it that makes it so straight? Because if you draw a line through each, uh, uh, between each dot, uh, the line is kind of representing every single infinite number of dots between the right. line. So if you drew a line, the line is just representing the dots. So if you do like a bunch of dots between, it eventually make a line. So right, right. You're doing a good job of explaining what a graph truly is. It is not two points and a line. The line is points. Yeah. But what I'm asking is here. I've connected these with a straight line. Okay. Between these two is a straight line. And between these two is a straight line. Why are we so sure that from here to there is also a straight line? Let me show you how I can connect two straight lines and it not be a straight line, like this and like that. Two straight lines, but they're not together a straight line. Sean? Because it, it would be saying that the, the graph isn't true, that the x, y equals 3x is not uh, well, it, would, it would be like saying three three x and three is x and y is twelve. That wouldn't make the graph true. That's well, sometimes if I if I just plot a bunch of points, I find that the points do not make a straight line. They just make a curvy looking thing. So why why would this equation have to make points that fall in a straight line? It's just an equation. Just picked some equation with some multiplication in it, and why do it? Why does it points? create a straight line, or just looking at the line, looking at the points, the way they are right here, what about the way they look, or their relationship to each other, the pattern that they're following, confirm or convince you that it's going to be a straight line if I just connect all these points with straight lines, Cadence? Well, the fact that you're not adding anything onto the equation itself, so if you were to add five to it, it'd be all over the place because... Okay, let's try it. Y equals three X plus five. Let's try Cadence's theory out. Let's put a plus five on everybody again to find two points. Okay, I guess I can find two points for this graph. Again, I'm going to throw out points and everybody's going to say yes, I agree or no. Johnny? Uh, 417. 417. What's everybody say about that? 417. Mm -hmm. yeah. 417. 3 times 4 is 12 plus 5 is 17, and that is why it's correct. Out? Uh, 1 8. 1 8. What's everybody say about 1 8? Yep. 3 times 1 plus 5, 8. Okay. 1 8. Monica? Yeah, so we say about negative six, negative thirteen. That's what we're going to Negative six times three. That's negative eighteen. Negative eighteen plus five. Mm -hmm. Negative thirteen. Yes. Okay. Negative six, negative thirteen. Negative six, negative thirteen. Ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Grady. Uh, two, two eleven. Two eleven. Three times two is six plus five. Is it eleven. Yeah. Okay. Two eleven. Two eleven. There's two eleven. Cadence? Um yeah, I was just about to say two eleven. Okay. Josie? Three fourteen. Three fourteen. What do we say about three fourteen? Yes or no? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Three fourteen. Oh, I'm gonna remember everything. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Oh, no, it's up there. It's off the charts. I don't have room for it. Charlie? Negative ten, negative thirty five. Negative 10, negative 35. I'm not going to be able to fit that one, but we can see if it would be on there. Negative 10, negative 30. Ooh, negative 30. What's negative 30 plus 5? Um, negative 30. Negative, negative 25. 25. Negative 25. Okay, now we fix it. All right. Johnny? 5 and 20. 5 and 20. 3 times 5. 15 plus 5 is 20. Yeah, okay. How about another one that I can fit? Anybody have one I can fit on there? Sean? Uh, never mind. 
Negative one, two. Try it yourself. Negative three plus five. Two. So negative one, two. Okay. How about zero? What would I get if I put a zero in for x? Five. Five. That would be pretty easy, though. All right, Cadence, does it look like it's all over the place, or does it look like it's in a straight line still? It's still in a straight line, but it doesn't look like it's origin. Does that matter? Does that make it not a straight line? No? Okay, I want you to just do uh, 2.1, number 3, and 4. Okay? 2.1. Okay.